January the 28th, 2022. Welcome to the video which I have titled uh, The Mass Psychogenic Illness of Havana Syndrome and in my case, Through Eyes of Londonian Buckingham Palace in Moscow. So, this is basically the title of this video. Welcome to Ulster Times. Today I am going to be discussing uh, this gentleman here that you see. I told him in advance uh, to not act so crazy uh, in front of me. Uh, he has advanced knowledge about Havana Syndrome and he has an advanced knowledge. He participated in my MKUltra case since 1995. And together with this gentleman here, I believe sometimes in 2007, when the CIA here, and the Pentagon he and top U.S. government in, officials in, in, for years now have been claiming quite explicitly room, that this was a campaign appear. of targeted. He, however, is just appears like a some kind of radio, internet host, something like this. Uh, but. But this individual here that you see, actually that you have seen here, that's a completely different fish. His name is uh, Robert Bertolmo. As you see, American-born medical sociolo soci sociologist, writer, journalist, and he claims also to be a human rights advocate. Uh, referring to the mass hysteria, uh, talking here about Middle Ages, witch hunts. See, oh, I was actually, this is the second time I'm recording this, even correct in a sense, because I, I, I got a really good sense for really where he is coming from, let's just put it this way. But since I touched the subject, where the man is coming from, um, he is on a Wikipedia too. All right. And uh, mansions here, country Malaysia. Yeah. So that's what most likely the case is now. Let me put it this way: the man is coming from. Man is coming from a pocket. Prince Charles's pocket. He is coming from a Buckingham Palace pocket. Straight. And uh, so that he is advocating Russians dearly um, that doesn't surprise me because it's you know all as they say algorithm game his advocacy of the human rights um, is just a temporary fake that we get in today's world based on probabilities for the future selection uh, he is coming otherwise, let's see this here again, he is coming otherwise, what is it, New York, well, when he had me in New York, we would, he took me to his hood, where his home used to be, but nobody was there no more, uh, everybody... I don't know, either left, was gone, I don't know what it was. The family, finito. Um, his life over there in New York, he did, started to pay more attention, but he was just, he wasn't the type he would want to come back anymore because he established himself in New Zealand, where he has the two daughters, and I think it was a subject that touched Malaysia. It's a possibility that one of the daughters, at least, married to a Malaysian I think um, a business started to boom it became a boom business selling books and so a daughter whom I understand uh, he even wanted for me to marry which I don't think so I, I disbelieve this kind of stuff 
Uh, this is just done to get basically in a pants of the Buckingham Palace. You know, it's just like a Buckingham Palace needed him, uh, and he really did. He managed to penetrate deeply through this case. This is the only thing I need to do is I need to go and resort myself to a very, very short explanation, which is going to do way better than what I possibly can do. He managed to penetrate deeply into a human rights issues, into an Asian society, uh, but basically that's the only video I would I would uh, basically video that's the only banner I would refer myself to I don't this this was used this principle this this portraying me as an ultimate evil uh, so the politicians the royalties anywhere in Russia in the Belarus in it's not about Moscow only it's not about Germans in Berlin so you know they could do their work behind portraying themselves as a productive as uh, toward human rights oriented people uh, with something else in the rear so he just happened so to be specialized he just happened so to be specialized into an Asian market and uh, a Russian market. Now, uh, let's go here with this one here. So I think that this is this is basically the best. That that's me right there in a in a green pants skating. Uh, and it says right there, save us from him. And if you want to see this video, you just have to go to, uh, it's, it's a popular group. It's called Gorillas. Funny, because when they did this video, I was brought to Miami. And this here, this was the guy. Uh, who had a problem with me and at the same time this is really hilarious uh, they had Russians already buying anywhere on Miami Beach down from um, Fort Lauderdale area real estate properties and some Americans rushed in my face that now this is just it was from North Miami Beach, I think. I don't know. Hollandale. I don't know. Uh, it's actually that I just have to get in on everything because the Russians already are buying. And yeah, you can see here they, in 2017, already spent $100 million. Uh, Putin literally had, when they brought me to the U.S. on Miami Beach, uh, they were literally filming this spot, this video spot. He already had a group of people that would come to meet me uh, on Miami Beach and claim me uh, how it's too late, don't even think about anything to say against the Russia and this and that. Literally. They needed this case. They needed Mr. Lukashenko needed Mr. Putin needed They all needed this case so they could hide behind someone. And even through the hatred, unite the world based on their algorithm needs. You know, algorithm. Algorithm, I don't know if I properly did express myself. Algorithm, uh, basically, algorithm. The word of probabilities, which is based on needs. Some of the needs have advantage over others. Um, you understand? That's basically how the Buckingham Palace, that's how the conquest for this world 
That's how the push for this world operates. That's what it's based upon. Right, this thing here. And this man that you see, this good man that you see here, this, as it says here, a medical sociologist, writer, journalist, and a human rights advocate, uh, dedicated himself, he dedicated himself to Morris. Uh, he dedicated himself to Australian abortions, to community, to a lot to the Asian community and to the Russians. Uh, this very man, this human rights activist, for whom I understand is very, very popular, and this is basically why they push this in my face, because they are trying to, based on an algorithm, they are playing a divide and conquer game. He just, at all costs, wanted to create division by subjecting me to most severe torture, man. This guy would have me without sleep, going without sleep for days. And we would go from one place to another, beatings. What kind of a human rights activist is this when you do beatings, when you do physical abuse on someone? When you don't allow him to go sleep for days, when you borrow him for days that goes around. That's not too damn good. It took me to the U.S., took me to Asia, Malaysia, Africa, not only New Zealand. I should know pretty much about absolutely everything about his environment. If I got a quiz, believe me, I would get a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, check marks, green ones, green check marks about this guy, because he participated in this case since 1995. He, he participated in this case and that's actually what really, really angers me. It's not even that regular beatings, abuse that you would endure from someone that is just doing this to promote, I don't know, maybe his business to get, trying to get a loan or trying to uh, get some contract or whatever, uh, or is trying to get, uh, I don't know, even maybe a ticket to some place or whatever. Uh, whatever the issue might be with this guy, with this guy, things are very, very different. This man, since 1995, did not only participate, this is a journalist, ladies and gentlemen. One of the titles he holds, this expert in a field of psychology, in a field of uh, he's specially, special, specially specialized, if I may say, in a mass psychogenic illness. Illness, this was like of the greatest, greatest interest. Any kind of psychological illness, any kinds of psychological problem that psychiatrists in Slovenia, the Serbs they had, they had a Udba people, foremost Udba people, Russians, they were obsessed with some form of some idea and even a very near neighbor here. My neighbor, physician Dr. Kotar, was obsessed with this guy. He was completely, he, it's like the biggest fan is the neighbor doctor, a physician Dr. Kotar. He was involved in this crime against me since 1995. So they wanted to get at all costs some kind of reasoning, something they could they could accent to the public that is just acceptable, it's actually possible. That's why this video, it's actually is such thing that a person uh, can develop certain issues. I'm going to touch in a little bit, don't worry about, we're going to touch these things uh, about this Havana syndrome, we're going to touch this thing, thanks. anything that could apologize. So the possibility is in it that Havana syndrome, that's basically about this Russian ray gun, I understand, or whatever, because I didn't even put much attention to this stuff. 
I have to disappoint people that think that I am based upon some kind of conspiracy theory about Havana uh, syndrome. I did not even pay close attention to this shit. I heard that there was a uh, you know, incident with this stuff, that people got ill, that they got attacked on a mass scale with some kind of weapon and this and that. Uh, under MK Ultra, however, I was told that this is going to be, uh, it could be like this or it could be like that. Basically, it could be like a fake human rights issues they promote in the United States of America today. Anything, any news is good news, so you cover the real news. Right? Am I correct? You can have a civil rights issues that are based on completely fake issues, just so as long as so you can cover more important based on algorithm needs issues that popped up in some other part of the world. As you know, I departed from the United States of America permanently in 2009, the last time. Uh, after 13 and a half years I spent in the United States, I realized there's just no that it was just a crime, was just the way of life. A lie was a life, basically. Leave a lie. Violence, MK Ultra, drugged up, tortured, subjected to torture. I haven't seen anymore any kinds of uh, alternative other than to just leave the United States of America, placed permanently on forced unemployment list. I was left with no choice other than to depart this country of, uh, well, not home of the home of the brave, but grave of the brave. Let's say. So, any kind of issue these people could get uh, that would apologize, that would apologize in this case definitely. In this case, definitely what. Slovenian government I'm not going to say on behalf of London or on behalf of Berlin or on behalf of Washington DC Slovenian government have labeled me with that was with a paranoid schizophrenia in 2012 based on which I was hospitalized so that I could be tortured more 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 subjected to MK Ultra transported to locations worldwide it was all on behalf of the Russia, it was all on behalf of the Serbia, who needed this kind of assistance from the United States. Uh, they needed the money from Berlin, they needed the money from London, they need to update themselves like everybody else. But crime against me foremost was done for the sake of the Russia, for the sake of Serbia. I was basically a goat sacrificed Slovenian gold sacrificed for the sake of the USSR, for the sake of Yugoslavia, which both have fallen apart. That's all I was. And it was a gift given to the Eastern Europe, to the Putin, to the Karadzic, to the Milosevic, to the people who were sent literally to the hog, a mass killer, a Balkan butchers, gift given to them literally by the West. That's all there is. It's like a short definition about exactly what happened here. On whose behalf, how, why. These this people were desperate to find some kind of something that they could connect me with. This individual here, the neighbor, Dr. Igor Kotar, he was obsessed with the idea to get some kind of something that he was just looking for every little thing that he could find so that he could say, yeah, he got this, he got that. When I returned in 2006 in the U.S., this man, just prior I returned, insisted me on that MK Ultra that I just have to settle for what he's going to offer me for the, as a solution, are going to be antidepressants. And once I start to eat the antidepressants, as soon as you're going to come from back from the United States of America, make sure you don't decline antidepressants. You're going to you're going to eat them because they have you, they got you, they own you. Uh, you don't understand. I made an arrangement already with the psychiatrists in Ljubljana, with the physicians here in Novo Mesto, with everybody, with the psychiatrists, so they, they will let you go. You just eat the, uh, the antidepressants, and that's going to be it. So he tried to catch me 
basically he tried to get me into antidepressants. He, they couldn't find any kind of reason, anything wrong with me. And they didn't even fucking reason. Because according to the statute, according to every fucking law in the world, you have the right to the second opinion. As per why you, I was forcefully hospitalized based on a total lies. Everything was a lie against me in 2012. I was labeled as a paranoid schizophrenic and hospitalized, thrown behind the walls and persecuted, forced to eat, to consume what they refer to as the medications, which would leave me a pain, excruciating pain that I felt, for which I felt it's going to blow me a kidneys, liver, everything, that my body is going to this decimate, fall apart. It at times suffer unbearable pain, so I couldn't do my stuff, so I couldn't do my work, so I couldn't promote my right to be alive, get attention from the human rights organizations and get this settled like a normal human being. So what they did was they rather to get the psychiatry in me, but they couldn't come up with a single cause as per why I would classify as a paranoid schizophrenic. The closest they came was thanks to the brainwash, the violent brainwash, and how I, they have brain implanted me with electrodes, anywhere from electrodes to chips. They got me to, I think it's MRI. In a little bit, I'm going to get to this picture here. Probably is an MRI. This here. Okay, very good. This one. It's MRI. That's what they got me the closest, and they demonstrated me. He claimed you don't have any kind of electrode, you don't have absolutely anything, you don't have anything, you don't, you don't. Um, so that's all it was. It didn't matter the brainwash, it didn't matter that a staff inside of the psychiatric hospital. Entire staff of psychiatric hospital, Ljubljana Polia, entire staff, the psychiatric staff of Novo Mesto Hospital here and from Celia and from Ljubljana, that they participated in this case. It didn't fucking matter to them the stuff that I have spoken about that eventually was real. That stuff didn't matter. Talking about MKL today, I spoke to them about it didn't matter to them. And so it appears that a second opinion about whether I did or not have this kind of paranoid schizophrenia, for which I, on the other hand, do have facts on hand, that I was transported all over the Europe, in fact, all over the world, when I shouldn't be anywhere else in the world than the United States of America, between 95 and mid-2006 did not matter to them at all. I never exited U.S. between 95 and mid-2006. That was like the, the best, the most rigid proof, yet I was all over the Europe, and I did have proven this beyond any belief. That didn't matter. What mattered was that you are branded, and we can do with you whatever the fuck we want to do with you. So they were desperate, as I stated, as I mentioned, this individual here, desperate about obtaining some kind of something. This is what worried them more than anything. How, do, how are we going to prove this stuff? How are we going to prove? This was actually already the main subject since 96, since 97, because my niece had a severe psychological problems. She was the one who had really suffered heavy psychological disorder, was violent under MK Ultra and could not even sustain herself observing a drugged up uncle basically. I'm an I'm her uncle. Uh, talk is about Urska Golob Weber. She couldn't control her feelings, she couldn't control her mind, and was losing mind time and again became a hopeless case, which sometimes in like 99, 
2000, they manage somehow to push her back on a track. They find her a boyfriend who became her husband and so on. And so somehow, some way, with all the work of psychiatrists from Novomest or from anywhere from Kopsch to the psychiatrists in Ljubljana, they put her back on what should be otherwise a human, a normal track, a normal mind. At the same time, they claimed that they're going to prove that I am the one who is insane and this and that. That was like the first Charlie, uh, Prince Charles of Wales, the great British royal, uh, a gentleman who claimed he's going to prove that, well, if I analyze Mr. Charles, if I we if we just go to the mental illness issues, as you see here, it says genetic disease and inherited disease. Um, for me, for the easier, I'm not going to get into this stuff. We're just going to classify this into the same group. So you have a mental illness that's based on genetic inherited. Uh, and you have what is known also as developed. Don't try to catch me on every little thing now. I'm just trying to make this video. Uh, when I have more time, I don't have time the same like they have in London in Buckingham Palace or Dr. Igor Kotar. I don't have so much time. I have to produce something that's going to benefit me basically so that I can move to another issues because there is an ocean of issues waiting on me and these are not easy issues. I don't do work in a quiet, peaceful, tranquil environment with the luxury of cheer, uh, money at hand and time basically so I can devote myself uh, to the same practice like this individual right here. I don't have this kind of luxury, so please don't get on my ass because of the stuff I'm trying to just simplify. You got two. One is inherited, basically genetically inherited, in my opinion. And then you have another one to put it on a, on a, on a bigger picture. And then you have another one, which is a mental illness developed on... Um, um, no, this is actually, this is developed. Okay, so, okay, so... Inherited, this here... As for myself, I'm just going to go and cross this out. This is inappropriate, okay? So you have developed, you have, you have, um, you have mental disease, which we're going to, we're going to title as developed, yeah? And you're going to have a mental disease. Developed is basically when you grow up into a poor circumstances, let's say the environment that was in Yugoslavia we the children had to repeat thousands and thousands of times that individual is whatever environment is uh, this is a theory very popular in the third world in undeveloped world however it did change ever since because in undeveloped world people also started to understand that that kind of theory uh, is not true that the mental illness is what Prince Charles was trying to claim me that basically is developed and he claimed that due to her circumstances that my niece had uh, developmental basically mental illness her illness was just temporary based on developmental issues and then you have just as I already have mentioned to you a little earlier uh, that's basically, okay, so what is that? Hereditary have a potential being carried from generation to another. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to call this genetic. We're going we're gonna to call this hereditary, whatever, genetic. Okay, so you have a genetic and you have developed. If you learned something from this so far, uh, I don't think I did give you the wrong tip. That's what I'm going to concentrate myself. Genetic, probably I don't have to explain. Genetic is based on your DNA that somebody in your family had already and you might have inherited it, uh, that kind of stuff, yeah? So this was a very, very touchy issue for a Buckingham Palace, even more so. Uh, Prince William insisted me 
That's basically Prince William. Prince William insisted me after um, they came up with a theory that a Princess Alice, which was a mother of Prince Philip, yeah, that's a grandpa from Harry and from William, uh, that I was the one who was laughing uh, that she was uh, mentally ill and they're mentally ill and this and that. That's a, a total bullshit. Uh, they just, they were looking for any kind of reasoning to destroy me, basically, to get me annihilated. Anything that would give them uh, a chance, anything that they could apologize the crime against me. So they also touch this issue here. They had some kind of lady that uh, that faked in front of me that was a Princess Alice and uh, what a son of a bitch I was and I don't know what. So that was the stuff that happened before this thing here with incident with a William who was here inside of this room uh, sometimes I think probably the year was 2010 probably uh, claiming me that I eventually will uh, develop uh, uh, he, uh, he, they had me in India okay they had me in India I don't know which country it was and I was brought from there it was definitely Buckingham Palace who arranged that shit. It was beatings, it was lots of kinds of stuff. Uh, no, I'm not angry at Indian people, but Indian people will listen, whatever I have to say. And so will Chinese, and so will Croatian, and so will Ukrainian, and so will everybody else that I, despite beatings, have embraced. You understand? Just because I did not talk against certain nations doesn't mean that abuse did not go there. It's actually quite on contrary, it did. There were two ways to make money. One way would be once I would gain a case, become recognized, uh, I would get about half a trillion dollar according to these numbers that's what they claim me it's going to be money to the roof from the US I don't know what year was it probably 2001 maybe something like this I don't know 200 250 billion uh, in 96 Buckingham Palace as a matter of fact in 97 in 98 in 98, when Princess Diana died, passed away, Prince William and Prince Harry inside of the dining room when we dined told me, you're going to be a very wealthy man. It was like, it appeared to me like the last time the angels till then have spoken to me. Those till then, the children were a beautiful children. They were just really a children. After that, the children were gone. When they spoke those words, it changed everything in, in, in respect to our relations. Relation, everything changed. These kids which embraced me then became something completely different. It was exactly that money promise that completely, completely changed them completely distorted their view on world and for that reason I'm going to tell you in 98 when they said these words I had never been afraid around these people but in 98 when these kids told me good for you you're going to be wealthy this and that we hear 50 billion dollar or something like that it was the words which I knew I'm going to lose two little pure souls, like the purest souls you possibly possibly could be. This is this is what the kids, these kids that Diana grew them 
That's how they really were. They were two little angels. There's no reason for me to say anything else. They were, they were just two little angels, completely innocent. But when the moment they said this, I knew it's over. I knew it was finished. And make no mistake, very soon afterwards it was. In 99, it started with handicapped issues and stuff like this. Uh, and it appeared to me for them to be already indifferent from whatever happened to me when I was brought to, for torture to Serbia, to Bosnia on the front lines uh, inside of these ditches where they exchange, they exchange bullets with the Bosnian people, with the Croatian people. Uh, I knew it's, 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 I'm worth it nothing anymore. Once they presented me with this, you know, William with your arm issue, I knew that's, that, that, that I, I knew what time it was, okay? So, they paid, they financed, the violence. It was either you're going to get compensated if you perform abuse, you're going to present me the proofs about the abuse you have performed, and you're going to get on hand, tick, tick, tick. you're going to get cash. Or other option would be basically for you to wait till he wins the case, because I embraced Ukraine, I embraced Croatia. Um, I like China. I liked Asia, but for the city to get the money, I'm not Chinese, I'm not Ukrainian, I am not whatever. I was really tough on Poland, I was really tough on Czech Republic and Slovakia, maybe. Uh, maybe this is, this is a reason. But I was angry about some other issues in respect to Taiwan. I didn't like the idea that somebody is pushing me from Poland forward, uh, from Czech Republic, with the idea to build himself a fucking Škoda factory over there uh, at my expense. Basically, um, literally doing this kind of stuff uh, and using me as a human shield. Uh, so to put right in front of himself, in front of the Škoda factory, uh, in front of China, basically. I didn't like that kind of idea. That's bullshit, because I'm Slovenian, and that's just not ethical. Either way, even if you get the money, it was a cities in all over this Eastern Europe. Yeah, if you didn't, if you don't, if you didn't do this shit, you didn't get the money from Berlin. You didn't get the money from Buckingham Palace. You, the money would not come, technology would not come. So whether you like it or not, you had to torture me. This is just the way it is. And just because of that fact, that doesn't mean you haven't heard me talking against these countries or whatever. I will not, because these are the countries I actually like, because I know that people embrace me over there. So I have no reason to fall so low that I'm going to demonstrate some kind of anger towards something that in real world I have a I always embraced even under MK Ultra despite beatings I still have embraced uh, when at the same time they gave the money like crazy to to the Russia to the to the Belarus to the Serbia and so on uh, these people were without option whether they would do this or they wouldn't get the money and and so on and so forth so to go back obsessed with idea to get some kind of proof, to get some kind of um, alibi for the crime. This man became, this man who participated since 95 and have observed me, I, have no, I don't even know what they have done. The only thing I remember is that since 96, this sound, shh, under MK Ultra, shh, always was present. I remember so because Kotter, a physician here, told me, uh, you're saying that I cannot do anything, eh? As I told him, basically, fuck off, I told him numerous times under MK Ultra, and this guy was just, uh, you're saying that you cannot, that I can't do anything, eh? What about the sound? Do you hear the sound? And in, at that time, it was a large play 
it was new they they were just they were just um, word that the gentleman you're gonna you're gonna hear me talk about Bartolome did not mention is hypnotize they hypnotized Eastern participants uh, with new technologies it wasn't only I that I walked basically jerked up around as they say in sleep yeah, they had they put out of the sleeve they pulled they pulled out directed energy weapons uh, they pulled out of the sleeve you know stuff that shocked them yeah. they took me to the hospital here in uh, Novo Mesto and they did a first brain mapping on me sometimes in 98 something like this it was 97 maybe and it was wow and they talked about the brain implants they talk about the Eastern European dictators Moscovici and Belgrade were interested in uh, you know how to fucking control the human being basically completely like in the US they did not I at least that's what they said but that I also I also doubt about that so but they wanted to exploit as like the first things of them with the biggest interest to them were brain implants how to control a human being completely how to have a complete control doesn't matter let's go back quickly anywhere from brain implants anywhere from directed energy weapons which was used on a hunger games in poland on donald trump's hunger games in poland to deodorants uh, I don't know what's the name of that hammer uh, that's actually used uh, to desanitize your shoes and uh, bacon um, it, it's not coming to me today uh, bacon hammer or whatever they told me all kinds of recipes to make homemade deodorants that they are the one uh, that are cancer free and I don't know what they came with all kinds of shit from their sleeves about uh, do it yourself do it yourself do it yourself they were just hypnotizing these people and they needed this show to go on that's why before you know you had a Hollywood here Hollywood people started to come here from 96 95 already they pop up here you have all kinds of clowns coming from all over the place and it was it became it, it, it started to like a illuminati culture started to flourish they had a game going they had this coin spinning whatever you want to call this uh and just happened so that uh i was in the middle of this coin spinning but this gentleman here that you see here this gentleman and that's what really angers me this is where the anger issues come in from my side this gentleman who also participated in this stuff he appears today to have a a reason and just about any question um slovenian psychiatrist this neighbor here of mine dr Igor Kota all these people crave for uh, because he offers the public ladies and gentlemen a theory about the mass psychogenic illness you know this gentleman that would engage in torture this was a journalist and the police that protected presidents uh, elite if you like anywhere from business people to politicians and royals the only one they were more afraid of eventually were people like this here this this guy here this was like the fucking scariest guy you possibly could come across this individual did not only torture this individual I should say individuals like him individuals like him uh, watch out he's also called a human rights advocate individuals like him
they transferred the media, they, they, they silenced you. You know, in Russia and Soviet Union, they would send people to Siberia. You would disappear or they would kill you. They would do whatever they would do. But in Western world, the only thing that would make you disappear would be literally through the media. Because if somebody would whack you in the middle of the day, somewhere, at whatever location, let's say publicly, it just well could happen if an important person was involved that the news would never ever come out. And guess why? Because the media, the publishers, the journalists like this one right here, who participated, and, and let me tell you, as I said, police, the only one the police was more afraid of the, than politicians, and uh, maybe a secret police or something like this, were these kind of journalists. Because the, the media, the journalists like this, they would silence the publication houses, the, the, um, the media, the outlets. So whatever would have happened, unless you would have, you would belong to some kind of organization or something like this, would never ever find a way out. So this was actually more brutal, more brutal world, more censorial censorship world than the Soviet Union was. And right in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, you have an individual who have a magic answer to Havana syndrome who participated in torture, in my case, since 1995. He's got to answer the magic answer about absolutely everything. And at the same time, this guy was inciting. He, was, he tortured me. He incited. They incited in anywhere from the stuff I told you, they involve in this stuff. Um, the theory about the sound, it wasn't about directed energy weapons. Even that sound classifies, sound torture, I don't know what kind of ultrasound, I, all kinds of sound frequency theories that they're going to do to you. They're going to teach you on the computer, demonstrate me on computer, brainwash me on a computer. Uh, how to actually, I'm going to record, sometimes in 99, in 2000, they started to present me uh, the recorders and teach me uh, the sound that, that uh, they totally engage in a paranoia, in a violent paranoia, in a violent world of paranoia on how you're going to go and you're going to record all this and you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you're going to, and you're going to find and you're going to find this and you're going to find that and you're going to have a clue here, you're going to have a clue there. Yeah, and once you do that, you're fucking dead. This is a killer. This guy is a professional killer. He is financed, completely financed by the Buckingham Palace. Even the issue about his daughter that involved, I do believe, an Asian who married her, uh, was a subject to approval from the Buckingham Palace. Every book he published, he's got two daughters. I think he's got two daughters. Every book, every fucking book he published on human rights issues were subject to a Buckingham Palace, to a Prince Charles's scrutiny. They had to be approved, and based on the algorithm needs, were approved. Based on the algorithm needs, this guy was also approved to penetrate as far as possible to the into um, human rights world so I suppose so Iraq could end up burned so I suppose Syria ended up burned so I suppose Libya ended up burned so the Egypt could face a civil war so the whole fucking world could cook and for it all, there was just, I don't suppose, I know so, one person to look to. And that's basically this guy in a green pants. He says right there, you see, save us from him. That's me right there. That dude right there in this green pants where it says, according to this group, musicians, uh, gorillas that 
they recorded this stuff, I was a uh, ultimate evil. And it was just necessary to do, to behave, to engage in really crazy kind of behavior, which I would relate to as an extension of this kind of journalism. Because it's this kind of journalists that present solution to a mass hysteria have also participated in creating this kind of mass hysteria. Through this kind of mass hysteria, which people like this individual helped, this human rights activist, advocate, create a completely abnormal society uh, already without even realizing engaging in um, in quite you know, kill the filibuster uh, quite schizophrenic behavior excuse me for me to say this when brought to Miami when they did this video spot, when they recorded this, this video spot ha, hijacked from Slovenia brought also to Miami among other all other locations it was this individual that jumped into my face uh, how I'm going to be fucked and this and that and then he had another version that this is going to be a way out it's going to help me out and this and that and then they have already other group coming to me this is this news here did you see 2019 2017 Russians buy 98 million Trump's Miami area properties folks they were buying already in, in North Miami Beach when I was in the US already this goes way back man this goes this goes all the way back to year 2000 it goes even before 2000 they already were purchasing condos they brought pregnant women to give their children American citizenship and so on and so forth and were laughing at me in Miami when I worked in, in, in Miami on in North Miami Beach in their luxury condos as a security officer they were fucking laughing in my face straight into my face making a fucking minimum wage that's a Vladimir Putin right there that's, that's what I'm talking about you know this is the stuff I'm talking about somebody somebody save us from him who was a part of necessary evil for Vladimir Putin, for the Buckingham Palace, for the Lukashenko, for all dictators that would meet right here in Slovenia, wherever where where I was brought, Poland, wherever I was brought, and make arrangements with Western leaders about how the world should actually look like you know this guy with the green pants this is this is this is i save us from him was just a necessary part of the evil whatever you want and you know it does anger me that the guy like this who participated in this kind of stuff and who left behind him nothing than a legacy based on a algorithm probabilities. He knows very well it's not Einstein. He knows very well he's just a temporary spot. He's not Einstein. He knows, despite his whatever what you could call it, behavior in front of the camera, he will be gone. Not even this theory will be really embraced. Uh, it's, I'm not saying that this is not a valid theory, folks. I agree, this, this is a valid theory. There's just one excerpt in his video I don't agree with. And that's really the Prince William. He knows very well he will be gone, whatever. Uh, his work, whatever, eventually for him is more important that one pays him off in this life. To him, to his daughters, and so on. And that's about algorithm based on which Buckingham Palace works. I want to go back to this issue here because what I want to say to you is like this. Inherited DNA, hereditary diseases, 
have a potential being carried from one generation to another. Just as the esteem of the people argued with me inside of this room in 2010 when they brought me, I, maybe from India, maybe from Pakistan, I have no idea. And Prince William entered the room. Argued with me in respect to the theory I have mentioned earlier was stated to me as still when he was here, Yugoslavia, Federation of uh, basically a greater Chetnik Republic, Yugoslavia, known as Yugoslavia, a greater Serbian state, basically, argued with me where it is the poverty that we have in the world, basically, um, whether it is, they relate to this to the poverty as a poverty. I don't. I do not. Mental disease is not, it is related to the poverty, definitely is, but this is not the same thing. It cannot be exploitation cannot be the same thing as a mental disease. But under MK Ultra, also because of the stuff that was done to me over there, I did not understood what exactly went on. And so I went ballistic on these people and so on and so forth. And that's exactly was a honey and milk for Prince William, for Prince Charles, basically for Prince Andrew, for the Buckingham Palace. That's exactly how they believe they're going to steer my life. They're going to drive my life. Basically, they're going to drive themselves through this issue here. They're going to get a free ride, you know, ticket to free ride, basically. So there was an argument whether it is genetically inherited mental illness, the cause of mental illness is genetically inherited, or it is eventually development disease. Developed, that's actually, is mental illness developed or inherited? Uh, developed based on environment as I stated in Yugoslavia we used to be taught uh, that mental disease uh, basically we are what our environment is that's what they brainwashed us with but the truth is it's not in a field of psychiatry in a field of psychology uh, they'll tell you it's not inherited um, uh, excuse me it's inherited uh, it's not developed okay so Oh, cool. I see here. I made a mistake here earlier. Developed or inherited. Okay. Good. Developed or inherited. Uh, in field of psychiatry, in field of psychology, which I also claimed under MK Ultra, it is inherited. It's not developed. Um, it was something that because of the poverty that existed in the part of the world they brought me from, uh, Prince William Buckingham Palace cherished this. Uh, they acted like they're on my side, and with the anger issues, they started to handle the other side, which started to protest, and they claimed it's uh, developed, right? Poor circumstances, you're from a poor background, and so it's developed. But these are two things that are different. You know, this is not really related to mental disease. You can be poor, uh, but and you you can be also in a very bad circumstances, like I am, and that's what Prince William provocated on. He was trying. That's how basically he believed he's going to capitalize on this video. He wanted to steer the hatred. He wanted the hatred from me with this video. He wanted the hatred from me through this individual here that you see. That's what he wanted to get as a response. He wanted the hatred from me. He told me like this, you're right, it is inherited mental disease. However, you will not know. So we went from my niece, we went from my niece to Alice, to the mother of Philip, Actually, for my niece, we went to the beatings. It was beatings, and beatings didn't do good. Desperate enough, they brought on the picture mother from Prince Philip, uh, how I may, was making fun of it. 
they're going to prove me at all costs that I'm mentally ill and I don't know what. Uh, and uh, finally, we ended up in a hospitals in an NHA system, in a British NHA system all over the hospitals in London, checking my brain, doing MRIs. Why MRIs? Why? Why MRIs? Because MRIs, let me see here. Okay, it's not here, it doesn't matter. Because the Havana syndrome, for the Havana syndrome, for the people with the paranoia, they told me under MK Ultra. I did not investigate this stuff because I was not interested. I was interested in job searching, doing normal shit. But these people would not let you get the fucking job. They would not get you let uh, life. They were interested in explaining you the theories about schizophrenia, theories about mental illness. The brain tends to modify itself. So we went to London and we went to the fucking scanning. Uh, we did the MRI, some back and forth, and he was claiming me, yeah, your brain is still normal. That was a Prince William. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you do not understand, but I have every reason to be upset with these people from Buckingham Palace. This is why this video is brutally honest like this. Prince William's claim, it was just one of the claims he made. It was a lot of other claims, but this is how low, this is how disgusting these people have fell on the MK Ultra. We are, you're right. It is not inherit, it's not developmental disease. Therefore, it's not from the poor background environment. It is from genetic uh, background that most of mental illness occurs. You're right. And that's how he insulted the people who came here, I don't know, from India or from Pakistan and confuse them on a poverty issue. He insulted them blatantly, through me, literally. But he said to me, because that's how he wanted them to see us. And that's this kind of a human rights guy that you see here. You know, this is, this is the real shit you are seeing here. He said to me, he said to me like this, oh, well, after we're going to do this to you, we're going to see after so many, so many years, they were destroying to me absolutely everything, from shoes to pants to everything they could get a hold of. Everything was torn apart. Everything I would buy would be destroyed within days. Blacklisted on, on field of employment, harassed and tortured under MKH most severely. Prince William told me, we're going to see after so many and so many years whether this theory that it's not therefore developmental but a rather genetic truly is in place because guess why I have the MRI of you today and we're going to see, we're going to compare your MRI to the one that's going to follow up on you after so many and so many years huh? huh? that's not bad for the young kid like this, huh? You understand degree of violence from the Buckingham Palace? Do you understand the meaning of my new site, of my website? If you would be talking about so much torture, about this kind of stuff, you probably would make a verbal mistake that would not only suspend your blog, but you would actually disappear. If not with the police inside of the jail, definitely inside of the mental health system. And he was demonstrated me, my brain, under MK Ultra, what it looks like, what it looks like. And then he was demonstrated me what, uh, what uh, on a laptop, what what looks from the people with uh, that that uh, that brain modified due to, well, you know, as Mr. Bartolome would regard to us, that's his famous mass psychogenic illness just that he is not even aware of this stuff because inside of the video that you're gonna see he actually even denies this if i properly understood this yeah i'm not gonna go over this video folks you're gonna have to see it yourself this is the video here uh 
uh, but somewhere here, something like this, he says this popular perception that's out there uh, that's a concern and I'm you're using, seeing that especially right because now. I'm using right now this uh, headphones it's not going to be helpful uh, it says so is no so is no yeah, it is yes well, once you're going to see this video you're going to see what kind of provocative facial expressive bullying person this can be he looks reasonable in this video now, I did use this picture here deliberately because I told him he brainwashed me on this video, on how he's going to make this video. He brainwashed me not only on this video, but he also used the individual here on this very video here. This guy, this young guy, this guy, this guy was, Syndrome, uh, mass this psychogenic guy was a very illness. provocative. And this the guy real really story for behind the embassy and stuff mystery. Like this. And bullying, hysteria. Insulted, he co-wrote this very, with very the fellow medical and expert Robert Below. This kind of so, Professor Bartholomew, uh, let's just begin. Can you summarize your book, Havana Syndrome, and, and what is you know, mass psychogenic illness, and how are you, and so on, as you a medical professional, what exactly I had dealt with? So, me having said what I said. I'll just basically regard you for you to see for yourself the video here. Doctor explains Central Intelligence Havana Syndrome conspiracy is a mass hysteria, not a Russian ray gun attack. For you to see it, it's in English language, for you to see it yourself. It's maybe insane that Robert Bartolomeo. It's quite crazy stuff. Uh, suggests that what he refers to as a mass hysteria, a psychogenic mental illness, for what the Russians, for what my neighbor Dr. Igor Kotar, for what the psychiatric hospital have done Polya without even giving me, without even having a single proof about existence of a mental illness, while I, on the other hand, have bombarded them with proofs about their wrongdoings, about the crime, about the genocide they committed themselves to. He is trying to equal, eventually, Russian, what he refers to as a Russian di discrimination against Russians, basically in a form of um, bias, let's just say in a form of witch hunting. He does so, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are aware, since 2014, Crimea, Ukraine have lost Crimea and Donetsk. Numerous people across the Eastern Europe killed. There was over 13,000 people murdered in Ukraine alone because of the Russian aggression. We have tanks right now sitting right on the Ukrainian border, and you have an individual like this here, somebody from, on a pay list from the Buckingham Palace, some kind of a human rights activist who is concerned for a certain group of Asian people but does not completely disregard issues that are happening on the other side of the world in a particular sensitive world location that already destabilized the whole world that more than easily can bring to the Third World War. I mean, you, you can be you can be more fake activist than this. You have him equal what he claims is a fighter for the Russian equality, basically, against the uh, bi uh, 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 Russian bias. You have this individual under this kind of circumstances through the crime engaging to against including including against myself you know if this is a human right activist presenting himself as a human right activist i don't know i don't know how this possibly could be more fake how it couldn't be more worse than this i don't know equaling basically bias against Russians with a witch hunt, 
with a Hillary Clinton theory, which is not difficult to point out, a theory about abducted kids that she is drinking blood from, and anybody would know that this is not real, that this is insane. And it's this kind of people, I believe, they also develop those types of theories, not only this Havana-alike bogus fake global experiment, you know, syndrome, whatever you want to call this, so they could proclaim, you know, that it's just a bias against the Russian people and so on and so forth, man. You know, go just 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 go over the just go over the video and you're, you're gonna you're gonna hear him comparing bias against the Russians with a witch hunt from Middle Ages with comparisons I have made, which is under given circumstances I said it is in my opinion this is insane. This is a lunatic. This is really this guy is actually in his zest. Uh, and I'm going to say to you like this, look, people reported like a very, very serious side effects, like p people, people reported like a very serious side effects, like nose bleeding and stuff that in my personal opinion, possibly, of course, that brain changes. If you become a schizophrenic, if you, if you become a paranoid, and you start to see things in the way things are not. And that's exactly what he says is not. And I say it's yes, it is. Within the group of people in that Cuban embassy, for you to create this kind of mass hysteria, you have to have some kind of people that contributed to this shit somehow, and that's what you should ask this guy, because he's a specialist about doing this shit. He participated inside of this house. He watched me how he was tortured. Yeah, he might just be a specialist who gave his professional advice on how to fuck the people on a U.S. embassy. Because if these people are not attacked by the microwave ray gun, or whatever ray gun, you know, you go and you Google and you're going to see directed energy weapons, what kind of weapons the fuck exist. And you're going to see the type of weapons that exist. It's going to blow your mind. If there was no Russian attack, if there was no attack on American embassy staff members, then it was a work of United States of America, of the country, of the state alone, against the people employed at the embassy. You understand? Because there's no there is no freaking other version. And for some of the injuries that people reported, it must have been something else that was done. It's possible that only two, three people reported this shit and it became a mass hysteria. But more than likely than not, something serious did happen to this if it's only for two, three people. You understand? So the U.S. government they came up with this kind of theory that there was no attack, there was nothing, there was no, there was nothing Russian to blame and this and that. Uh, man, uh, it's a theory twisted out of wine. People were definitely attacked. You have a people like Bartolomeo, Robert Bartolomeo. You have a people like physician I have exposed the other day who come with a Russian background, also American professor, that will go and fuck a fellow American over so they can get their interests across. You understand? So don't say that it's fault, that people are hysterical, that people are crazy, that there, there is some kind of reasoning, there's some kind of reason for everything when it comes to this mass illness, this mass hysteria. And for this particular reason, just like for myself, you do have to go to see London. You have to go to Buckingham Palace and ask them if perhaps they know something about this. Thanks for watching this video. And today is January the 28th, 2022. Bye-bye now.